uh, one more one more thing no, for, for, from PDEA. For DOH, let's ano, pasubmit po ito yung ano, uh, hinihingi natin. Um, yung PDEA was previously launched this uh, Preventive Education and Community Involvement Service. Thesis. Is that right? Uh, kayo, kayo po yun, di ba? Which according to the agency has been continuously undertaking efforts to reach uh, various sectors of the society and uh, in promoting anti-drug uh, campaign. Can you give us a background of uh, of this uh, PESIS and who are uh, your main targets, aud audience, uh, in implementing uh, PESIS? Kasi tinuturo nyo kanya yung NYC, baka dapat kayo. <laughs> Sige pa. pa. Actually, sir, PESIS is a, is a ser service. Preventive education uh, is an office. Uh, yun po yung opisina ko ngayon, sir. Uh, sa PDEA po. Uh, ang function po namin, sir, is to, yun, advocacy uh, sa anti-illegal drugs. We, our audiences are schools, uh, people in the workplace, and uh, government and non-government. And we also do other um, anti-illegal drugs activities such as medical mission and uh, outreach program. Of course, to be friends with the community and soon to be our friends in the fighting against illegal drugs. And right now po, uh, speaking of, I may mention to you uh, DTB regulation. As of now, sir, uh, maglalaunch po ang PIDEA ng isang programa na kapatid po ng DOH na rehabilitation and treatment. Ito po yung tinatawag na... Patients license, ha? Huh? In, uh, yes, sir, this is, a di this, this is different, but we are sisters uh, with DOH. Sir, sa amin, sa PIDEA po is a recovery rehabilitation program. We are to call this Balay Silangan. Uh, Balay Silangan means uh, bahay, tahanan. Silangan where the sun rises, where sig what that signifies new hope, new life for our drug offenders. So this is a law enforcement still under PIDEA, but this is the compassionate side of enforcing the law. And uh, as the beauty queen always saying, this is a law enforcement with a heart. So hopefully we'll be launching this this coming March and uh, we're calling for your help. This will not be successful, sirs and ma'ams, kung hindi niyo po kami tutulungan. At ito po ay tugon sa... Uh, mga komento ng iba nating kababayan na bakit namamatay. So ngayon po, bubuhayin. <laughs> Tutulungan, kailangan po namin lahat po ang tulungin niyo para mabigyan po natin sila ng maganda at bagong buhay. Yan po. Thank you. Please let us know how we could be of help. Uh, our, our offices are, will be ready to, to help in any way we can. Let's uh, proceed. Um, we have two or three more here. Uh, from the Council for Welfare of Children. Let's hear it from uh, Ms. Uh, Ariel Gonzalez. Ma'am, you're recognized. Uh, sorry, sir. Uh, good afternoon, Mr. Chair, Senator Gachalian, and the, uh, uh, the body. Uh, isang makabatang hapon po sa inyong lahat. Kami, uh, in behalf of the Council for the Welfare of Children, uh, we would like to inform you that for these bills, we have already drafted a position paper, but it is currently being routed to our internal structures, particularly the technical management group. Uh, but uh, allow me to provide initial comments for the three bills. Uh, for Senate Bill 1149, uh, Section 3 in implementation states that it would provide uh, the DOH will uh, administer, coordinate, and recommend policies and programs designed to provide prov uh, financial assistance uh, to ensure the well-being of students, especially in elementary and secondary schools. So we would like to recommend that maybe those uh, out-of-school youth and in alternative learning systems be also considered. And since uh, elementary schools are considered here, we would like to respectfully recommend also that not only the youth but also children. Uh, this would be the definition of children as we know from RA 7610 is those below 18 or, and or those who cannot take care of themselves. For the next bill, uh, Senate Bill 992, um, we recommend that 
uh, the inclusion of the Department of Labor and uh, Employment be also considered in the school-based program since the dollar would have, uh, uh, since this bill would also cover child labor. Po, and I, I believe that they have a structure, I think, shield on child labor that can provide technical assistance in support of this bill. Um, also, for the community-based programs, the Council for the Welfare of Children, if I may respectfully inform the body, is not an implementing agency. We are a policy-making body composed of line agencies who uh, promote and protect the welfare of children. Uh, so maybe we can recommend that other agencies uh, focused on the service delivery can help in this endeavor, uh, but we can provide technical assistance if need be. Uh, also, the Barangay Councils for the Protection of Children uh, is not under the depart uh, is not under the Council for the Welfare of Children, but actually under the Department of Interior and Local uh, Government. Po. Uh, what the Council for the Welfare of Children does is it's part of the uh, monitoring and awarding committee tasked to uh, provide uh, incentives for the child uh, for child friendly municipalities and cities po. and one of the indicators is the establishment of the barangay councils for the protection of children for the last bill senate bill 686 uh, the council for welfare of children recognizes that this complements uh, republic act 10821 or the children's emergency relief and protection act particularly component number eight, which talks about the part uh, child's rights. So one of the uh, rights of the child, based on the UN Convention on the Rights of the Child, is uh, participation. And uh, based on the development, uh, based on the guidebook developed by the Council for the Welfare of Children, one of the ways that we can uh, ensure the participation of children is to actively inform them of the uh, initiatives being done to protect their welfare and to also have uh, to give them a voice to uh, to these issues and in terms of policy and program development. So uh, for our additional comments and more detailed comments, uh, we'll just forward it to the committee na lang po. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Ms. Gonzalez. Uh, of course, we don't want to miss the comments and the position of the Department of Education. We'd like to give the floor to uh, our uh, dear uh, friend, Under Secretary uh, Umali of the Department of Education. Thank you, sir, for being here. Uh, yes, Mr. Chair. Uh, I, I understand that our uh, director co already commented on uh, at least one bill uh, that has something to do with uh, uh, youth participation in disaster risk reduction and management, uh, uh, Mr. Chair. So first on Senate Bill 1149. Uh, uh, Mr. Chair, uh, uh, pong sinusuportahan po namin ng lubusan ito pong uh, Senate Bill Number no. 1149 na ito kasi po ang ginagawa po nito ngayon ay this will institutionalize what our uh, our uh, uh, what DepEd has already been doing uh, with respect to uh, youth drug abuse resistance education and prevention which uh, this uh, senate bill seeks to achieve i just would like to share aside from uh, manifesting our categorical support what DepEd has been doing so far in relation to its present mandate under the comprehensive dangerous drugs act of 2002 republic act 9165 particularly under sections 41 to 46 under article 4 entitled participation of family students teachers and school authorities in the inform enforcement of the said law so i invite uh, mr chair our dear secretary definitely not today mr chair to look closely into those provisions because i could see how this law will further strengthen those sections that I have mentioned. We also have, having said all this, Mr. Chair, Department Order Number 40, Series of 2017, issued by our dear Mom Liling Briones sometime last year on the conduct of random drug testing in both our public and private uh, secondary education schools. We started this already. We started, meaning the answer is yes, uh, Mr. Chair, but only up to the portion of uh, training our uh, school officials as to how to act, uh, actually conduct the drug testing. Uh, drug testing per se. Hindi, hindi, hindi pa po. 
hindi hindi pa, hindi pa no? Apo, pero malapit na malapit na po kami doon kasi medyo mabigat uh, Mr. Chair kailangan yung amin pong mga kawani na maari pong guro o hindi guro kawani ng ating kagawaran ay dapat po talagang alam ang kanilang gagawin paano hahawakan yung samples how we are engaging uh, Department of Health to preserve the not only the integrity of the sample but the confidentiality of the identity of the individuals uh, may meron po dyan at ang, ang talaga pong uh, pinag-uusapan din po namin dyan uh, Mr. Chair ay kung ano po ang gagawin ng ating mga opisyal sa oras na makita po natin nag-test ng positibo. So, so meron po tayong uh, ganun pong pag-uusap doon. Having said again all this, Mr. Chair, uh, ang, ang kagandahan po ulit ng Senate Bill 1149, this captures, maybe not articulated categorically, but this captures what DepEd has already been doing and therefore institutionalizing what we are already doing. And that is, uh, ang ginagawa po ng DepEd, uh, Mr. Chair, again, uh, consistent with uh, uh, the compre comprehensive uh, RA9165, I, we have the uh, curriculum integrated na po sa curriculum ang uh, drug education program po natin uh, ngayon with this law uh, there's a mandate so hindi po pwedeng basta-basta tanggalin we also have advocacy campaigns or extracurricular activities to uh, again do what this uh, bill uh, seeks to do and finally we are also doing our drug testing. With respect to the first uh, thing that we are doing right now, integration in the curriculum, specifically, uh, Mr. Chair, our subjects like uh, our, our staff here provided me grades for Mr. Chair, for example, there's a topic in uh, health education. This is part po of MAPE, Mr. Chair, na kung saan pinag-uusapan po ang iba't ibang uri ng klase ng medisina, ano po ba yung mga medisina na maaari pong uh, magkaroon ng peligro kapag ito'y ginamit sa hindi tamang pamamaraan at inabuso as early as grade 4, Mr. Chair. Grade 5, we talk about concept of gateway drugs, products with caffeine, uh, uh, yung mga mga produktong may alkohol at yung konsepto po ng uh, pag-aabuso po nito at maaaring uh, epekto sa ating uh, kalusugan. Uh, grade 8, uh, lalo po pinaglalim ang pag-uusap nito. Again, under the subject Health Education, which is part of MAPE, uh, Mr. Chair, at also in grade 9. With respect to co-curricular uh, activities, Mr. Chair, I just would like to, to share what our dear Ma'am Niling Briones has always been saying. Ang sabi po ng ating Ma'am Niling Briones, dapat po, yung uh, pag-deliver nitong modules na ito ay hindi parang uh, simple lamang na uh, very theoretical, conceptual. Through our co-curricular, uh, through, through, through the conduct of these co-curricular activities, Mr. Chair, our Ma'am Niling Briones has mandated our schools to conduct advocacy campaigns in a very creative manner. This may mean in the form of film showing, Mr. Chair, uh, showing some uh, pictures, kung ano po ang mangyayari, inviting uh, uh, persons who actually use drugs and they will share how, you know, this destroyed their life, etc. So may mandato pong ganun ginagawa ang ating uh, kalihim uh, Ma'am Niling Briones. At panghuli po yung nga po yung random drug testing. Uh, finally, Mr. Chair, on this particular Senate bill, again, we, we commend our dear Senator Joel Villanueva for, for, for filing this bill and we hope that this will become a law. Uh, we, 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 we support the comment of PIDEA that we may put somewhere here, Mr. Chair, the possible role that our DILG, uh, lalo na po, nabanggit yung po, sila rin po ata nagbanggit yung out-of-school youth kasi hindi na po yun ma, masasakop ng DepEd, uh, 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 kung, lalo na po kung school age po yan at wala po silang paaralan. At DSWD, uh, lalong-lalo na po doon sa aspeto na kapag, bagamat klaro-klaro po dito, uh, abuse, resistance, education, and prevention program. Pero baka gusto po natin mahagip lang, Mr. Chair, paano kung may nakita po tayong na, uh, nakalulong na sa, uh, sa, sa pinagbabaw na gamot at baka pwede po natin lagyan. Of course, this could be captured in the IRR, pero magandang mabigyan po ng mandato din yung mga 
ahensya tungkol po uh, dito. And uh, specifically, that may be inserted under uh, the TOR or the obligations and responsibilities given to DEPED and CHED. If we will insert other agencies, maybe, Mr. Chair. Uh, panguli, Mr. Chair, ma maganda po siguro, lalo na in the repealing clause, we could put some wordings like on top of the mandate given to varied, various institutions under RA 9165 so that they would know that on top of what they have been given, we are just enhancing and strengthening the, the, the said law, Mr. Chair. Uh, if we, we, we could put that somewhere in Section 8 or again in the duties and responsibilities of each agency that we have identified uh, uh, in the bill. With respect to Senate Bill 992. Uh, Be before you go there, let I me mean, just uh, 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 acknowledge what, what you mentioned. And uh, I think this is, the, this is the key here of what we're doing here. We wanted to institutionalize everything that you are doing, uh, yung DSWD kanina, yung DOH, and, 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 and to find a, 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 a program that would address this uh, particular issue. For example, in DepEd, you have this uh, national drug education program in schools, no? itong NDEP. And uh, it was, it's a memorandum number 200 series of 2016. It has five components, curriculum and instruction, co-curricular and ancillary activities, teacher and staff development, parent and community outreach, and research monitoring and evaluation. Uh, perhaps if just for 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 enough time, no. Uh, if if you can give us and provide uh, an update of uh, the implementation, and again, uh, issue kanina yung, yung yung budget. How, how much is your your budget in uh, implementing uh, this program? Program, and as we mentioned a while ago, yung possibility to integrate itong uh, NDEP, for instance, or other programs that you have with the objectives of this measure. So I hope yun yung tignan natin as, as you submit all this uh, uh, information that we're asking for. Thank you, Yusef. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, on uh, Senate Bill uh, 992, again, uh, we fully support uh, this bill of our Honorable Senator Winnie Gatchalian. And uh, again, uh, the, 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 the beauty of this bill is now this will again institutionalize what that Ed uh, has been doing, uh, Mr. Chair. Uh, so this is no longer an option for our agency to do or not to do this because we are now mandated by law to precisely do this. And we would like to share, Mr. Chair, that right now, uh, education uh, program that has something to do with the uh, human trafficking are now integrated in our curriculum, particularly in the subject uh, or the subjects Araling Panlipunan and Edukasyon sa Pagpapakatao. In Araling Panlipunan, uh, Mr. Chair, uh, Grade 6, we start talking about yung konsepto po ng uh, mga karapatan ng ating mga, ng ating mga mamamayan uh, sa ilalim po ng saligang batas. And then uh, we also talk about the concept of basic human rights. Uh, but not the way is articulated here. This is very purposive, Mr. Chair. The, uh, let there be no doubt about it. The, the way I'm saying it right now, what is integrated in our uh, curriculum are the general uh, concept of human rights. Uh, at ito pong bill, kaya po napakaganda po nito, ay binibigyan po ng kamalayan ang ating pong, uh, mga kabataan kung ano po ba ang uh, ibig sabihin at paano ba dapat itong iwasan yung human trafficking uh, na ito. But ito po inadadaanan again sa grade 7, uh, ilang topics po sa asignaturang Araling Panlipunan, grade 9 and grade 10. Uh, when we talk about uh, human rights, uh, pagsusuri po nito, ano po ba yung halimbawa sa paglabag ng karapatang pantao, sa aming pong subject na values education, uh, grades 5, 6, 7, uh, Mr. Chair, 8, uh, pinapaliwanag po dito ano po yung mga papel na dapat uh, gampanan ng, uh, ng ating mga uh, iba't ibang uh, opisyal, ang ating pong mga magulang para po maprotekta ng karapatang pantao grade 9 to Mr. Chair we will give a copy of this uh, matrix Mr. Chair uh, but again, the beauty of this bill of our uh, Senator Wynne Gatchalian is that 
not only that this will institutionalize the, uh, the, the, the mandate to have an education program on human trafficking, is that it, we will also be very purposive in uh, contextualizing our curriculum. On top of this, Mr. Chair, uh, we have some uh, advocacy campaigns, Mr. Chair, uh, when we respect, uh, when we celebrate some programs, but again, uh, with the passage of this bill, uh, we are very confident that all these advocacy campaigns of ours will be further strengthened and enhanced. I just can't help but notice in section four of the, of the bill, no, yung nine nine two, requires school officials to assign guidance counselors or equivalent support staff to identify and protect human trafficking victims and at risk. Uh, yung mga estudyante po natin. Siguro, gusto ko lang tanong, Yusek, kung, kung, kung we have enough or uh, do we have, uh, for example, licensed guidance uh, counselors in our in our schools? Ano bang ano, bang, ano niya ng status? We, we, we do, Mr. Chair, but we don't have enough uh, licensed guidance counselors. So we call them registered guidance counselors. And when we say registered po, uh, Mr. Chair, uh, meron po tayong tinitingnan na uh, educational uh, qualification, uh, post-graduate uh, studies that, that they should uh, uh, have earned, and uh, may mga licensure exam po, Mr. Chair, uh, Senator Wee. Yeah, that's Republic Act number 9258. Yes, sir. Yung uh, Guidance and, and Counseling Act oh. states, no person shall engage in the practice of guidance and counseling without a valid certificate of registration yes. and a valid professional identification card yes. for a special permit. Yes. So, yun, yun, yun yung concern natin yes. eh. Baka so, yung supply, Mr. Chair, baka na, nasolusyonan po nito nung uh, equivalent, I, I remember you, equivalent support staff in case we don't have an RGC. Uh, bukod po doon, Mr. Chair, yung kakulangan ng supply, Mr. Chair, assuming that there is a supply and they are interested, yung amin po kasing, uh, but we're trying to address this under our mamliling briones, ang, ang item lamang po kasi namin binibigay uh, Mr. Chair, ay uh, medyo mababa po at uh, hindi po kumbaga kaakit-akit para po uh, mainganyo ang ating mga registered guidance counselors to apply sa atin pong uh, kagawaran ng edukasyon. Very sad to say, Mr. Chair, we have RGCs who are holders of salary grade 11. I don't mean any disrespect to those who are holding salary grade 11, pero klarong-klaro, Mr. Chair, with their educational attainment, with the training, with the uh, exam that they have passed, and even a civil service uh, commission circular, the minimum salary grade that they should be receiving should be either 14, 15, or 16, Mr. Chair. And and we are, under our Mamliling uh, Briones uh, leadership, we are addressing that po. Uh, so, kakulangan ng uh, supply, Mr. Chair, kakulangan ng insentibo para maakit po itong mga registered guidance counselors na ito para po uh, mag-apply sa ating pong uh, kagawaran edukasyon. Yan po yung ilan sa mga sulunin na ating pong kinakarap. Kung kaya, baka may issue po tayo to have uh, RGCs or Registered Guidance Counselors to be available to uh, address yung issue po ng uh, psychosocial intervention sa ating mga naging biktima ng human trafficking. Ang kagandahan po nito, Mr. Chair, yun nga pong equivalent support staff. We have the, the equivalent Kasi usually ang aming pong guidance counselor, nalangang gamit, gamit po sila, uh, Mr. Chair, lalong lalo na under the K-12 law, with respect to guiding our children on uh, yung career guidance, uh, Mr. Chair. So we have what we call career guidance uh, counselors or guidance uh, career guidance advocates. So may mga training po kaming ginagawa. Pero ang klaro rin to, Mr. Chair, ang gagawin po namin dito is we will give the proper training to our support staff in the absence of an uh, or uh, irregistered uh, guidance uh, counselor. We fully support, no doubt, uh, Mr. Chair, the passage of this bill. Yusek, uh, I think, if, you, if I'm not uh, mistaken in guidance counselor, the way I understand it, mataas yata yung requirement to be uh, a registered guidance yes, counselor. Yes, Mr. Chair. And uh, because of the steep requirement to be a guidance counselor and then mababa po yung sweldo na binibigay yeah. obviously uh, walang uh, na attract or no one's Wala po. Uh, no one is attracted Apo. to Apo. the public school guidance counselor i think uh, there are some moves to uh, 
fix that uh, distortion somehow okay. no later okay. on. Uh, ang ginagawa po namin halimbawa Mr. Chief Iba yata yung tawag nyo eh. No? Hindi siya red... Uh, uh, we we call them registered guidance counselors, uh, Mr. Chair. But is that the um, one who took the exam? Uh, 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 tawag doon sa... Or, uh, RGC, may, that's how they call it. Meron... Meron na nyo yan eh. When you take the exam, you become a... Uh, uh, I don't know what, you, what term do you use. No, for guidance counselors? Me, me, meron po kaming ibang item, Mr. Chair, na mas mataas, pero we call it parang supervising... Uh, but that's not the one recognized by the uh, professional uh, okay. commission. Uh, sila rin yun, Mr. Chair, kasi kailangan may, may, may lisensya na, na, na ipasa, Mr. Okay. Chair. Kaya po kung... License, wala, license sila. Apo, apo. So, okay. so we only call our guidance counselors registered guidance counselors, Mr. Chair, who are licensed. Po, who are licensed. Okay. Because they cannot under the law use that, ano po, Mr. Mm -hmm. Chair, that, that title if okay. they have not passed the, the, the exam. Yeah. Pero, yeah, tinututukan namin to, Mr. Chair. At uh, uh, we could uh, sit down with you, Mr. Chair, uh, to, to address this, yeah, maybe in another is. bill. Kasi sa totoo lang, Mr. Chair, uh, I have met them. Uh, pati po yung career pathing po nila, uh, can you imagine, yun po yung natapos nila, tapos ang ano nila ay parang uh, yung entry level. Marami, marami ng batas requires guidance counselors intervention. Ah. I know, Mr. Okay, Chair. Bullying, but... mga ganyan. Uh, exactly, Mr. Chair. All guidance, kung wala tayong registered counselor, uh, I know for a fact, sa Valenzuela, hindi lahat ng school may registered guidance counselor. I'm, I'm pretty sure of that. Kaya nga po mayroong mga problema of bullying and all of this ganitong mga uh, mga violations. Uh, sometimes it's really the, uh, not why sometimes, most of the time it's the principal who intervenes. Yes, Mr. Chair, some of our staff na may training po para po uh, harapin yun. In, in that case, Mr. Chair, yung sabi niyo po, child bullying or uh, child abuse. Uh, uh, may, meron din po tayo, depende po nga sa pangangailangan, tulad nung kayo na sinabi ko po, Mr. Chair, uh, meron tayong uh, mga career uh, guidance uh, advocates. That's how we call them, so we train them, Mr. Chair. Uh, pero, Mr. Chair, uh, at, at the proper time, Mr. Chair, alam niyo po, Mr. Chair, hindi po talaga attractive sa registered guidance counselors at nabagin nyo nga po uh, na ang dami po nating mga batas na nangangailangan po ng ito. Pero paano po sila sa sali kung yung uh, salary grade level nga po pang basic uh, entry level lamang po ng ating mga guro tapos yung qualification nila medyo mataas. And career pathing din po, parang uh, hindi nila makita kung saan po sila uh, pupunta. Let, 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 there's no doubt, Mr. Chair, that uh, RGCs are very important in our Yusuf, schools. We welcome uh, your suggestion on how to uh, uh, fix or improve the guidance counselor industry. Uh, I have talked to a few. Sabi nga na medyo uh, parang uh, yeah, mababa yung sweldo and, and uh, hindi uh, uh, masyadong steep in requirement. Maybe in the light of what's happening here in our country and in the light of the requirement for guidance counselor, we should uh, come up with a concept that will merge the, the requirements and also the guidance counselor uh, sector. No, uh, hindi hindi sila na pag-usapan mabuti. Actually, uh, for for schools, mahalaga sila, but hindi na pag-usapan ng mabuti. Sa sa kasatotol lamang po, Mr. Chair, uh, na kailangan po talaga sila. Kailangan talaga po eksperto. May tamang kwalifikasyon, may lisensya, kasi iba po pag binabasa nyo po yung, yung uh, pag-iisip po ng ating mga anak. Mr. Chair, if I may just add for the record, to address this issue of uh, lack of uh, qualified RGCs in our schools, dahil nga may kulang pong supply, at kung meron lang kaming item, may wala namang takers, we train our values education teachers sila po yung nagtuturo ng edukasyon sa pagpapakatao, yung aming values education subject. Uh, ito po yung mga teacher one holders, uh, holder ng salary grade 11, and we call them like, quote and unquote, designate guidance counselor. But definitely not uh, registered guidance counselor, Mr. Chair. Yusek, um, ibabalikan ko lang itong proposal. Ano? Um, it, the, the rationale behind my proposal is really to uh, bring down the fight against human trafficking all the way down to the school level. Uh, I remember when I was still in the local government, 
I uh, encountered a lot of victims, no? Uh, mostly nasa high school na sila eh. In iba talagang na human trafficking, iba pa human traf mabibiktima pa lang, in iba binibiktima. But uh, I, I realized that the the syndicates ang target nila high school because unang-una yung high school definitely hindi pa ganun ka-develop yung kanilang pag-iisip. Pangalawa, hindi pa nila alam yung mga nangyayari. At of course, marami rin tayong poor families na high school mo lang, they're looking for a way to support their families. So, the victims, in, at least in my experience in Valenzuela, mostly come from high school. Although meron rin college, but I think pababa ng pababa, pababa, pabata ng pabata na yung nangyayari. Kaya, the, the concept here really is to integrate yung uh, education against uh, against human trafficking and second also a mechanism to help you no know, students who are uh, victims who were or who were victimized by human trafficking to institutionalize that concept without really adding you no know, new positions or new uh, uh, things in the school but uh, riding on the existing infrastructure of the school so yung po yung concept dito and um alam niyo yung um, Human trafficking really is a silent, uh, I would call this, is a, you know, a silent uh, crime that victimizes our students uh, because of poverty, no? primarily because of poverty. And nakakawa uh, ho, dahil, you know, as young as 15, 16, napapasok sila sa prostitution, uh, dadalin sa Malaysia. Uh, mabilis lo coin with social media right now, it's easy to entice uh this this children no, to go into uh human trafficking and the ang common balik naman ng mga syndicates pag nahuli mo sila eh payag naman sila no so they become willing victims of these syndicates and that's what we want to prevent yung uh no they become willing victims of human trafficking um this is a real problem although everyone's focus on drugs but this is still a a, a real and present uh, problem of our country that's why we, um, you know, we, we propose to institutionalize that fight, make it more extensive without adding so much burden uh, to the schools. No? Yung po yung concept dito. Yeah. So, uh, Mr. Chair, uh, finally, Mr. Chair, uh, before I, with the permission of uh, our, uh, Mr. Chair, uh, allow our director to comment on the disaster risk reduction uh, management uh, youth participation. Act, uh, Senate Bill 686. Mr. Chair, I would like to say, talking about institutionalizing uh, what we are already been doing, this really institutionalizes, Mr. Chair, and further strengthen our Debt and Order Number 40, Series of 2012, which we call our Child Protection Policy. There are many provisions there, Mr. Chair, that also talks about uh, this type, this particular type of child abuse uh, that has something to do with human trafficking, uh, Mr. Chair, and uh, with this uh, uh, Senate bill, uh, hopefully this will become uh, a law, uh, it will now become a mandate that cannot just be changed by any uh, administration who may ever sit uh, uh, as our uh, head of our Department of Education. But any statistics on human trafficking, uh, yeah. uh, do we collect information or data on uh, uh, human trafficking. Uh, I'm sure DSW meron, no? but I want to direct this to yeah. DepEd because uh, yeah. yung, mga school, yung mga students na pumapasok sa schools natin yeah. and yeah. nagbibiktima sila o nagre-report yeah. ng nabiktima sila, meron ba tayong ganitong... Yeah. Yeah. We, we statistics? have statistics, Mr. Chair. I hope this will capture the, the, the query of our good chair. Uh, on uh, incidents... Uh, 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 cases of child abuse, which includes uh, human trafficking. So, sa child abuse po, pwede pong uh, physical abuse, sexual abuse, sexual harassment, uh, pwede rin, at buo pa po yung child bullying na, na uh, committed by a child against another child. So, meron po kaming ganung mga datos, uh, Mr. Chair. We'll provide uh, some numbers, uh, Mr. Provide Chair. Provide us with... Uh some data on, eh, eh, ganito, no? I think Apo. the human trafficking is part and Apo. parcel of uh, abuse uh, or child Apo. abuse. So, so hopefully we could disaggregate that, that the way our good chair is asking it. Right. Okay. And it, uh, you said, uh, I'll just uh, digress a bit, no? Tungkol dun sa drug testing. I heard earlier that you're embarking on a random tra drug testing for high school students. Is this correct? Yes, Mr. Chair. 
And how many, how many, how many uh, testing are we envisioning? Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll provide the exact exact number, Mr. Chair. But the objective is, Mr. Chair, that the, the sample, so random nga po, Mr. Chair, should be reflective of uh, the 95 percent or more of the population in our public schools. Mm -hmm. So we're looking at. Uh, I'm almost certain, Mr. Chair, 10 to 20,000 uh, students. Eh. But, but, but I may be wrong, Mr. Chair. I, I want to give you the, the exact number, Mr. Chair. 20, 10 to 20,000 uh, out of... Uh, well, uh, because we're talking only of uh, secondary education, uh, Mr. Chair. Yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll so we're looking at uh, 382 schools, Mr. Chair, uh, at... Uh, you know, this is the number that they, they gave me right now, Mr. Chair. 55 students per school. This could be even more, Mr. Chair, because the objective nga is 95% uh, uh, of the total uh, population, and Mr. It, Chair. It, it, it will start uh, this school year or this coming school year or uh, it has already uh, started? In, 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 uh, Mr. Chair, in our Depth and Order number 40 series of 2017, it's it mandates na dapat po uh, magsimula po this school year. So, mm -hmm. nagsimula na po yung pag-training ng mga tao po natin. Pero yung actual conduct of uh, drug testing sa mga bata, hindi pa po uh, nangyayari, Mr. Chair. Okay. Pa paano kung, let's say, positive yung bata? Apo. Dito po sa, apo, uh, Depend Order Number 40, Mr. Chair, uh, ang kagandahan po nito, klarong-klaro, uh, we try to distinguish those who may test positive dahil sila po ay parang nag experimento po lamang or occasional user or talagang uh, lulong na po sa droga. At uh, o sa pinagbabawal na gamot, uh, Mr. Chair, at depende po doon sa uri, kung pag nakita po namin, na i-assess po namin mabuti ito. So meron pa po itong unang test na positive, itetest po uli namin to confirm that indeed uh, positive, positibo nga po yung, ano, yung, yung, uh, yung, yung resulta. Uh, depende po doon sa uh, uri ng pagkalulong ng bata ay uh, yun po yung uri ng intervention na atin pong gagawin. We are engaging Department of Health and DSWD on this matter, uh, Mr. Chair. Lalo-lalo uh, na po doon sa nangangailangan ng actual rehabilitation in a formal uh, drug rehabilitation facility. Kasi po ang pagkakaunawa ko po rito, uh, Mr. Chair, meron po tayong... Uh, uh, mga iba't iba pong uri ng uh, paano po marirehabilitate ang mga bata. Ano nga, for example, positive yung bata. So, what's the next step? So, i-assess po namin, Mr. Chair, kung gano'n po yung uh, lalim ng problema. Uh, assuming is... Uh, Occasional lang, Mr. Chair. Experimental lang. Or, or yeah, uh, siguro extreme. Uh, siguro sabihin na natin talagang uh, habitual user na ito. We have a referral system, Mr. Chair, where our DOH uh, experts will be engaged and DSWD to come in po at uh, i-refer po natin sa tamang pasilidad uh, yung bata. So, pa pati daw ata doon, Mr. Chair, eh, may dalawang uri rin po yan, eh, yung talagang formal uh, drug rehabilitation na ipapasok ang bata o kaya yung community uh, rehabilitation system. So, ang, ang klaro, Mr. Chair, uh, yung nangangailangan po ng tulong at intervention ng mga eksperto uh, mangyayari po yun Mr. Chair with the uh, help of DOH that will be free of charge to yes the, Mr. Chair on the part na of ng, the child uh, sagot na ng gobyerno yan apo, apo. Okay. at siguro dahil napag-usapan to Mr. Chair uh, nais lamang po natin idagdag na ito pong uh, layunin po talaga nitong uh, random drug testing na ito is not to penalize or to punish those who will test positive, we will view them as victims na kailangan pong uh, tulungan at uh, i-reforma. Hindi po ibibigay kahit kanya. This will be confidential, uh, Mr. Chair. Uh, at yung, yung mga kaalam lamang po ay yung uh, tamang uh, DepEd personnel at, uh, at ng uh, DOH na siya po magpaprovide yung tamang uh, intervention. And definitely, this will not be shared. Uh, with any other government agency other than the, the, the ones that I mentioned. How much is uh, allocated, how much budget is allocated for this particular program? 
itong uh, Department Order Number 40. We, we will provide the, the numbers, uh, Mr. Chair, kung, kung magkano po yung uh, budget po rito, Mr. Yeah, Chair. I think it's clear yung, yung reservations namin ni Senator Sherwin, no, yung how, how you're going to handle it. And uh, we wanted to make sure na, of course, in DOH, DSWD are, are, are aware of this, na yung mga experts talaga yung, ano, yung mag-handle nitong mga information na to kasi it's it's a it's a sensitive issue especially for our children or our young people uh, y y yes mr chair in the uh, actual conduct of drug testing that will be closely coordinated with the department of health mr chair uh, medyo maganda po mr chair we could sit down with you mr chair on how we are uh, actually uh, training uh, our people on uh, on uh, to, to, to implement uh, this particular DEPED order. Kaya na po, Mr. Chair, hindi pa pa ko kami umaabot dun sa actual drug testing kasi as we roll this out, nakikita po namin kung uh, gano'n nga po ito kasensitibo and no less than our Ma'am Liling Briones has given her assurance on the issue of confidentiality rin, Mr. Chair, kasi hindi yung issue eh. Mr. Chair, kaya may agam-agam. At yung konsepto nga po, na we just want to have some baseline figures dito at matulungan yung mga magtetest ng positibo. Thank you. Let's let's hear now for ano lang, for the comment ng... Sige. Before we move on, uh, curious lang ako, no? we have drug testing, random drug testing for students. Sa teachers, meron? Uh, you, uh, meron po. And oh, we were other school officials. I am just, yeah, okay. I'll be like in Valenzuela, pinatest. Nag, yes. Uh, actually, it's a city hall, hindi nga random lahat pinatest. Yes. And yes. They, they agreed, no? Yes. Uh, and, uh, Mr. Chair, sa central office po, lahat ng aming mga opisyal at kawani ay required na dumaan po sa drug testing. Lahat po ng aming kawani rin at opisyal sa regional and division offices. Sa teachers, as a requirement ngayon po para po makapasok. Uh, we are making that mandatory now as a requirement. Pero kasi, Mr. Chair, meron po tayong umigit kumulang na 680,000 teaching personnel. So, tinitinan natin kung paano po. But definitely, we also have uh, an equivalent program, random drug testing, uh, for our teaching personnel. Pero kung lahat po, uh, tinitang, kasi uh, may cost uh, implication po ito, Mr. Chair. But uh, we, we take note of that. Pero meron in a later... Yes, later yes, time. yes, Mr. Chair. Yeah, because I'm just... Wondering, sasabihin ng parents, eh, bakit yung anak ko may, may subjected to random? Pero yes. kung alam nila yung some of the personnel are also, yes. I mean, no, we cannot uh, discount yes. the fact. No? Yes, Mr. Chair. Uh, we could be assured of, uh, about that, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Let's hear now uh, for the comments of the Department of Education, Senate Bill Number 686. Thank you. Good afternoon to sa inyong lahat. Um, the Department of Education actually recognizes uh, the... Uh, the impacts of disasters no, in depriving children of their right to quality education, especially in a safe, secure, and conducive learning environment. However, we also recognize that while the um, children and youth sector comprise a highly vulnerable uh, sector, the department, the department also acknowledges the meaningful contribution of the youth in becoming advocates and agents of disaster risk reduction and management. Therefore, the department welcomes the membership of the youth in the National Disaster Risk Reduction and Management Council as proposed in Senate Bill Number 686. The envisioned empowerment of the youth, in fact, reinforces the department's continuing efforts to institutionalize DRRM in the education sector. Pinagosa pa na rin lang po yung institutionalization in the same manner, gusto ko pong sabihin, na yung Department of Education actually has integrated or mainstreamed or institutionalized disaster risk reduction and management in the department since 2011. Yung opisina pong pinangungunahan ko ay yung tawag po dito ay disaster risk reduction and management service. Doon po sa DRMS, Ito po ay uh, mula sa central, regional divisions and schools. No? In the school level po, mayroon po tayong tinatawag na mga school disaster risk management teams. No? Pinangungunahan po ito ng school principal o kaya ng designated uh, teacher. Kasama po dito sa ginagawa ng mga bata, yung ating uh, regular na mga drills. No? They also have trainings. Kasama na po dito yung mga basic life support trainings. 
taon-taon din po, bago mag-umpisa ang pasukan, may tinatawag po tayong school watching and hazard mapping ng mga sudyante. No? Nakapaloob po ito sa isang department order ng DepEd. At uh, dito po, yung uh, findings ng mga bata no, tungkol sa mga hazards na confronting them within the school and the vicinity, pumapasok po ito na parte ng school improvement plan, which of course is um, actually funded under the MOE ng mga eskwelahan. So, ito po yun sa isa, isa lamang sa mga uh, ginagawa ng ating mga um, kabataan. So, mayroon training facilities? Uh, do, do you have adequate training facilities for that? Um, ang uh, trainings po usually ay ginagawa ng mga partners natin. No? Yes, resource persons tulad ng uh, Philippine Red Cross or kaya pa ng mga child-centered organizations po. Meron din po mga ibag um, gumagawa po ng mga batang emergency response teams, yung BIRT na sa iba't ibang skwelahan. Uh, care of yung pa, um, the partners who are actually organizing children no, na may partnership sa mga schools na ito. May mga gumagawa rin po ng mga regular na camping na may DRRM, uh, DRRM components po. Okay? But in view of the shared goals of the department and the proposal, the following points of clarification and comments on specific provisions are raised. Um, on section 2 po, the bill citing R8, RA844 defines youth as persons aged 15 to 30 years old. However, we would like to note that RA10821, the Children's Emergency Relief and Protection Act, defines children as those below 18 years of age. Kailangan po natin um, i-resolve yung overlap. No? Kasi what do we consider as children, which in the um, Emergency Relief and Protection Act actually underscores as needing protection versus those within the youth age. Okay? So, kailangan po ng alignment. There may be a need to reconsider the, defin the definition of a youth representative which requires that the individual in question be a member of a youth organization with key focus in DRRM. Ang unang tanong po namin, the adequate number of groups on the ground qualifying under this definition. Sabi nga ng NYC kanina, at the national level, it's easy. NYC is sitting down in the engine council. Pero yung din sa baba, no, how... Um, how many youth groups do we actually have nang focus talaga ay DRRM? The restrictive definition might preclude other active and capable youth organizations from representing actually the sector. With respect to Section 7, the proposal calls for coordination with the Department of Social Welfare and of course the Department of Health for three trainings and interventions pertaining to mental health and psychosocial services for children and youth. Gusto po namin i-recommenda yung inclusion ng DepEd kasi under the current MDRIMC health cluster arrangements, yung DepEd po ang in charge sa psychological first aid ng mga bata at ng mga aming kawani. Ito po ang ginagawa namin in partnership with DOH and actually DSWD. Yeah. Doon din po sa definition of the youth, okay, in the Barangay Disaster Risk Reduction and Management Councils, Baka pwede yung tignan kasi, kasi nga ito tinatanong namin, yung 15 to 17 kasi sa R8 and R8 to 1, considered po needing protection under, uh, ano, under the term children. So, ang tinatanong namin, kailangan ba tayong magkategorize actually doon sa representation? Kasi ibang-iba po ang pananaw at karanasan ng mga bata na nasa high school age level at doon sa mga nagtratrabaho na na-ranging from 22 or 24 to 30, ibang-iba po yun. Oo. So, kailangan po natin inuwans talaga yung uh, konsepto ng youth at yung needs din po nila. With reference to the second comment on Section 2 on the guidelines formulated by the National Youth Commission is stated in Section 7, ang hinihingi po namin sana ay yung council to actually set in place an accreditation system what that would determine if a certain youth group may actually be eligible for membership in the LDRRMCs. Para lang po, ano, uh, masigurado natin yung uh, quality rin ng representation. Okay. In view of the compensatory Section 8 naman po ito, compensatory benefits provided for volunteers 
as a stipulated in RA 10121 and cited in the bill, we need to review and strengthen the guidelines for accredited community disaster volunteers. The department welcomes and recognizes the need for safety net for volunteers during disasters and provision for ensuring that the same benefits be extended to government um, to government employees as well. The gusto na namin sana sa buong NBRIMC, ano yung sa, di ba, nagsa sunset review po kasi ngayon, di ba, merong uh, inilalatag na pag-amendments uh, na sa R8 and 1 to 1, ay ilagay din po kasi yung need for a hazard pay for all, a hazard pay ng insurance for all those actually deployed for a uh, response in the event of a disaster. Okay. Kasama na po dito yung volunteers. Overall, the need for engaging the youth in age-appropriate DIY activities should be highlighted. The roles, responsibilities, and protection for members of different age groups should differ and be in line with existing laws and internationally accepted standards. Kauliwagyan po yung gusto ko ngayon ba yun sa budget rin lang ay nakalagay at sinusuportahan na po namin ito. But I would like to underscore that kaakibat ng budget uh, kailangan natin is state that the initiatives should actually be programmatic, reflecting thematic areas of R8 and 121, rather than specific activities for inclusion. Sinasabi ko po ito dahil doon sa karanasan ng God budget ng mga bandang 1998, nung nag-uumpisa po yung God, hindi malaman ano ang uh, considered na ipapasok sa God na activities. Meron gender na, and development. Okay. Yes, sir. Uh, yung gender and development po. Nung una, yung mga papiesta na kung saan may, ay considered na po yan na ano. Yung mga ganon. Kailangan pa para pumasa sa budget, kailangan din matulungan ng mga kabataan paano ba ang programming, planning, no? in a very programmatic, strategic way of looking really disaster risk reduction. Nakasama po yung prevention at hindi lang pang response ang ginagawa. Because the youth, in my experience also, no, na, nang galing din sa mga edad na yan, na potential po talaga kung, kung uh, bibigyan nyo ng uh, pl platapurna ang kabataan, Para mag-aral at paano ba mag-facilitate, paano ba gumawa ng plano, paano ba mag-budgeting, kaya po yan ng mga kabataan. But that platform, that inclusion should actually be um, indicated or uh, um, directed in terms of the uh, content of the proposed bill po. So with that, uh, salamat po. Thank you. Thank you very much. And if you have any other uh, additional uh, points, uh, um, issues that you'd like to uh, to submit in this committee, please uh, do so. Uh, balikan ko lang ulit kanina yung kay ASEC uh, Pangilina, no? Kasi in 2015, NDRRMC and National Youth Commission entered in, the, um, in, in a memorandum of agreement formally recognizing ne, yung uh, NYC and uh, I think we also understand that the Office of Civil Defense even recommended that the youth sector be made an active member of local disaster coordinating councils. Siguro, ASEC, yung minihingi ko lang kanina, yung whatever uh, lessons and insights that uh, we got out, uh, I mean, uh, from it, uh, from that collaboration, baka pwedeng uh, ma-share niyo po sa amin. Actually, uh, Mr. Chair, dati po daw kasi, talaga umuho po si NYC as part of the observer ng council. However, this commission or the ninth commission of the National Health Commission, uh, wala po po kami natatanggap na invitation from the NDRRMC to observe or to sit on their, um, pag nag-convene po sila. Director uh, Ko, uh, ma'am, ito, I, I was reading very quickly lang, no? Ito participation lang in the uh, different bodies, no? Tama. But yung actual training, no, iba yung participation, giving them uh, presence in policy making, but pag tinawag na talaga yung mga kabataan tumulong, alam ba nila kung anong gagawin? Marunong ba sila mag-basic CPR, mag-basic uh, first aid? Nag-training po sa mga schools namin ng uh, basic CPR, basic life support. But how many of them? Um, uh, we don't have the numbers uh, with us right now. This is initiated by Dep DepEd? Yes, sir. Okay. Kasi uh, kasama po yan sa... Yes, sir. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. But not all schools, no? Uh, um, wala po kaming numero, pero every year po kasi uh, they are mandated like, do you have to a number kung ilan ang studyanteng na-train sa basic first aid? 
wala po kaming ano nun, sir. But we can actually get the number of schools uh, and the children yeah. kasi taon-taon naman yeah. po, ano. Yeah, maganda um, yung policy making but again, no, iba yung warm bodies on the ground when uh, sabi ko lang kanina kay uh, Mix sa Taiwan, merong 6.4 earthquake just happened uh, na, ngay ngayon na lang, kanina lang, no? I yes, mean, sir. These, these things can happen here in our country but do we have able bodies that can respond? Can the youth respond? Do, do, can they respond even within their school premises? Th these are things that we have to uh, prepare for. We have training, sir. We have also stories like uh, yung uh, kahapon ba yun, yung earthquake din sa Batak. Uh, yun. Meron pong uh, chineshare po kasi ng mga coordinators namin from divisions and regions yung mga ganong instances. Ano yung ginawa ng mga kabataan. So, meron po kaming mga ganyang ano, um, stories po. Documentation. But, but, but Mr. Chair, just, just, just for the record, on top of what our director ko mentioned, yung po yung, yung kung ilan po yung uh, sa lahat ng ating mga mag-aaral, we, we have more or less 26 million, uh, make it 27, uh, Mr. Chair, public, elementary, and secondary, including private uh, schools nationwide, uh, Mr. Chair, from kinder to uh, grade 12. Uh, under the, they call it Samboy Lim Law, Mr. Chair, eh. uh, mandato na po na ituturo ang CPR, uh, Mr. Chair, uh, sa lahat ng uh, mga mag-aaral po sa ating panel. Ito a particular law or memorandum order? Yes, yes. Then, then there's a, uh, okay. an, an order. It happened because si Samboy Lim daw po, Mr. Chair, ay hindi po sana nangyari yung nangyari sa kanya kung yung mga tao doon sa paligid niya ay marunong mag-CPR. Opo, eh, nagkataon hindi po. So, so that's, that's how, uh, Mr. Chair. Uh, at ang sinasabi ko lang, Mr. Chair, yung sinasabi po ni uh, Senator Wynn po natin, Mr. Chair, ay mangyayari po na under this law which uh, was just passed, and we are now crafting the IRR. Yung sinasabi ni Director Ronnie, even without the law, we have these trainings that uh, we are giving, but now with this law, all our students should know uh, CPR. Thank you. You want to add something, uh, Asik Pangilinan? Yes, Just to add in po, um, the National Youth Commission is pushing for the mandatory ROTC, which will also be um, focusing on the DRRM. And I think malaking participation din po to ng kabataan natin if the mandatory ROTC will be uh, approved. Siguro yung dagdag dun sa DepEd, if we can pinpoint yung mga schools na, di ba, in, in the danger zone, siguro mas, mas bigyan natin sila ng, ng time and the uh, effort to train. Mm -hmm. Um, yes, sir. We have the data po for that. Uh, we can provide you also the data. And then, uh, yeah. pwede naman namin kunin kasi meron kami in terms of specific activities, may data po kami ilang schools uh, ang gumagawa nun sa buong bansa. And then again, if there's a problem in uh, budgeting, dalawa na kagad yung kakampanyo dito, Championing Education, si Senator Win and myself. Anyway, uh, yes, uh, Asik Man Wong, you're recognized. Yes, Mr. Chair. I just would like to suggest the updating of the exp explanatory Hope you are not uh, recounting your uh, budget <laughs> proposal, uh, because <laughs> Senator Reed is already here. I'm not, Mr. Chair. It's with uh, a suggestion on the updating of explanatory note of Senate ba Bill 992, particularly on the cited 2014 trafficking in persons report because we have already the 2015 and 2016 and we are waiting for the 2017 already. And for the 2015 and 2016 trafficking in persons report, your, Mr. Chair, we, we were given a tier one ranking, Your Honor. And for that purpose, we are willing to give you a brief on that. Please, thank you, ma'am. Thank you very much. Uh, marami yung salamat po sa inyong pakigisa sa pagdinig po natin uh, ngayong araw na ito. I mentioned in my opening uh, statement the importance of collaboration when dealing with issues affecting our children and youth. I think the bottom line is that uh, protecting our children from harm and empowering them is everybody's business. Lalo na po kapag panganib sa buhay ang ating, uh, ng ating mga kabataan ay, uh, ay dahil sa droga, trafficking o kalamidad. Magkakapatid po ang tatlong isyong ito. Kapag may droga, may trafficking. Kapag may biktima ng kalamidad, may pagkakataon ang mga traffickers na makapag-recruit. So I think these three bills are all important in, uh, to protect our children and youth. And thank you for uh, your comments and uh, suggestions. Let me just give a quick recap or synthesis 
of what uh, transpired this afternoon. First, on Senate Bill 1149, it is clear that we need the uh, proposed youth drug abuse resistance education to complement the existing of more or less, uh, right now we have 19, but hopefully we have already 21 drug abuse treatment rehabilitation centers run by DOH and LGUs and uh, 30 uh, drug abuse uh, treatment and rehabilitation centers run by private sector as well as uh, PDS Preventive Education and Community Involvement Service or uh, PESIS. Maganda rin pong balita yung programa ng DepEd at narinig natin kanina kay Yusef Umali, especially yung integration ng drug education sa curricula at uh, non-curricula activities of DepEd. However, we are interested to know, as uh, I've already uh, mentioned earlier, the current budget of the DOH on educational materials, advocacy campaign, etc. on drug prevention so that we can champion this uh, in the deliberation of the 2019 uh, budget. On the other hand, ASEC Pangilinan also suggested to establish a school anti-drug council to be uh, in close coordination with law enforcement agencies. However, there seems to be a need to look also at our existing programs, particularly the uh, uh, SDEC or the Special Drug Enforcement Center, as mentioned by uh, Ms. Laksa, to avoid redundancy or duplication of our programs. Sabi ko nga po uh, kanina, anytime pwede naman nating i-pull out itong uh, panukalang batas na ito, kung mapuprove natin na mayroong functional na programa on drug education and prevention at kung mayroon, sana magkaroon ng uh, impact assessment para, sa, uh, para makita din po natin kung ano po ba yung uh, magiging scope and uh, limit ng ating ipinapanukala itong uh, why there. Sa akin po, mahalaga yung impact assessment. Sana ma-institutionalize po natin yan sa lahat ng mga programa ng ating uh, pamahalaan. Ikalawa, ito pong Senate Bill 992 as uh, uh, being proposed by our seatmate, Senator uh, Wynne Gachalian. I take note of the fact that our curriculum has certain degree of flexibility to adapt to uh, needs and interests of the students. So it is uh, encouraging to know that the uh, proposed uh, human trafficking preventive education program can easily be integrated in the curriculum because as ASEC uh, Pangilinan uh, made mention, when youth are educated, they are empowered. Nabanggit din po kanina ni Yusek Umali na sa kasalukuyan, kasama ang usapin ng trafficking, karapatang pantao sa edukasyon, sa, pagkakata, sa pagpapakatao sa ating K-12 program. Nabanggit ko nga po kanina na dapat dalhin talaga sa classroom ang issue ng trafficking at maging sa ating uh, komunidad. Ms. Laksa of DSWD also gave her suggestion to include the 2017 Trafficking in Persons Report in the Exploratory Note of SB 992. Nung uh, na-draft po kasi ang bill ay yung 2014 pa, yung uh, data na available po sa atin. So thank you for that information. May also mention that ASEC uh, Manuo also made a good point on the institutionalization of the Human Trafficking Prevention Program because it will complement the mandates of the Interagency Council Against Trafficking of the Department of Justice. Third and lastly, Senate Bill uh, 686, proposed by Senator Bam Aquino. I agree that the proposal will reinforce the key concept behind the National Youth uh, Development Plan, which is youth participatory, uh, youth participation. No? Uh, kaya sa ngayon po tayo dun sa binanggit kanina ni ASIC Pangilinan na dapat ay uh, kasama ang NYC sa NDRRMC, especially at the local level. It's good to know that we're not uh, starting from scratch because uh, Ms. Laksa mentioned a while ago that we have existing DSW, the uh, youth groups like Pag-asa Youth Association of the Philippines and Unlad Kabataan, which can be tapped for risk reduction, especially at the local level. Um, let me end with the quote from uh, uh, Fr Franklin Delano Roosevelt. Ang sabi po niya, we cannot always build the future for our youth but we can build our youth for the future. Kung bibigyan po natin ng tamang edukasyon at paggabay at palalakasin pa natin ang loob ng ating mga kabataan, tutulungan natin silang magkaroon ng skills. Magkakaroon po talaga sila ng maganda at matatag na kinabukasan. Sa inyo pong lahat muli, maraming salamat at pagpalahin tayong lahat ng ating Panginoong Diyos. This uh, committee hearing is now adjourned. Thank you.